Join me as I take on the challenge of living in Kuala Lumpur for two months on a tight budget. Two people, just $65 per day. Can we make it work? All right, here we go. We only planned to spend one month in Kuala Lumpur over the last year, but it was such a great experience, we just had to come back. Once you visit Kuala Lumpur, a city that blends a mix of amazing cultures and cuisines with an iconic city skyline, one visit is never enough. From the towering Petronas Towers to the vibrant streets of Bukit Bintang, let's explore the amazing attractions Kale has to offer together. Plus a trip to a city in the mountains that's just full of excitement. I took a leap and embarked on full-time travel in 2022, armed with drones and cameras. I share my adventures as I travel across Southeast Asia. Venturing into the unknown has been both exhilarating and rewarding. To me, Southeast Asia is a gold mine of experiences, rich in culture, amazing people, delicious food, and unforgettable adventures. And it's this very essence that I share with you. So pack your curiosity, buckle up, and subscribe to join me on my wild adventures through the amazing cities, unbelievable landscapes, and hidden gems of Southeast Asia. We're gonna head to KLCC Park, it's just over here. So come along, let's check it out. Let's go. just here at KLCC Park. So KLCC stands for Kuala Lumpur City Centre. This is their park. Reminds me a lot of Darling Harbour back home in Sydney, Australia. It's very similar, just as modern too. So as I walk off 
some of that KFC, I wanted to give you guys an update on what I'm currently doing. So I'm in Malaysia for four weeks, looking forward to exploring the city and showing you guys how cool this city is. I've been here before, so I know what it's like. The reason why I'm here is because my visa was expiring in Thailand, so I had to go somewhere. Decided to check out Kuala Lumpur because I know what the food is like. I know what to expect here. It is a good city. It's a modern city. The food is amazing. They've got good culture as well. And while there's not too many adventures, there are a lot of really good activities. So this is my first week here so far. It's been great. I've been eating a lot. I might be eating my way through Kuala Lumpur. I hope you're not to put on too much weight actually. But yeah, this is a pretty cool city as you can probably tell already. And I'm looking forward to bringing you a lot more in this series while I'm here for these four weeks. potato and gravy so we've got extra spicy chicken so that's definitely something that's not available that I've seen anywhere else they've got their cheesy fries they're actually wedges too just your normal chips and then just got to try a burger I just got the stacker burger so I'll try the stacker burger first Good. The chicken seems to be a lot more crunchier than what I'm used to. They put the cheesy sauce on the burger. It's okay. It is definitely different to KFC I've had elsewhere. Right. So, potato and gravy. Potato and gravy here is quite nice. It's a lot more peppery flavoured really good. Now the coleslaw. Coleslaw is good. It's not as sweet as I've had it in Australia anyway. In Australia it can be quite sweet. Chips are pretty standard. Not much chicken salt. And then these cheesy fries. These are the cheesy fries. They're actually wedges. They're actually quite nice in flavor. The cheesy sauce is a bit too much for me, but tasty just the same. Now, let's try some of the extra spicy chicken. So let's pull up a bit. Nice and tender, it's very hot. Got a really nice spicy flavor. Much better than just the regular hot and spicy. It's really nice. Not too spicy though. Not like Thai or Indian spicy, but it's nice. It's good. Just the Coke. I tried to find some more things that were original to KFC Kuala Lumpur. But there's not a lot, but it's quite general to what you see in most places. They do have rice instead of chips as an option. So all up, it comes to 48.95 Malaysian ringgit. It is a meal for two people. I'm not eating all of this by myself, by the way. So <laughs> there's no way I can finish this. And I'll definitely have to be hitting the gym after this meal, that's for sure. So I'll put up the 48.95, what that actually is, in Aussie dollars, US dollars, and British pounds.
that was KFC. Overall, the extra spicy chicken was really good. Not sure about that cheesy sauce though. It's KFC, so usually delicious no matter where you go. So it's currently 8.30 in the morning. Looking to grab some breakfast. I'm here in Pudu in Kuala Lumpur. So Pudu is part of the inner city area. Looking to just grab something light for breakfast before I hit the gym. Going to be doing the $10 food budget challenge today. $10 US works out to be 45 Malaysian ringgit. So I've got 45 Malaysian ringgit for the day. So that's all I can spend. Let's start off with some breakfast. Let's see what we can get. And let's see if $10 can last me the full day. All right, let's do it. So I just found a place in there that does peanut butter toast. So grab some peanut butter toast, heading back now to do some work before I hit the gym. I might grab a drink. The place in there for the peanut butter toast costs just five Malaysian ringgit. Uh, they had 550 on the menu, but they only charged me five. Actually, Pudu area where I'm staying is really good for food. There's so many different food places. I don't think I've had a bad meal since I've got here. Every place is pretty good. And food in Malaysia is a big part of their culture. It's like there's so many 24 hour restaurants because not only do they have breakfast, lunch and dinner, they often go out for afternoon tea and then they have supper, which is late night meal as well. So Malaysians love to eat, that's for sure. Here at the 7-Eleven, grab a drink. Right. Just grabbing a good day chocolate milk. The good day chocolate milk, 320 Malaysian ringgit. All right, so this is the peanut butter toast. Looks really good actually. So we cut it in half. Lots of peanut butter. It's quite good, as you can see. Pape style bread. So quite thick. Chocolate milk. It's just standard chocolate milk. Nothing really special there. Good day. You might appreciate that one, the Australians. Been to the gym, got some work done. Now it's time to go and grab some lunch. See what we can get. Just here at a mixed rice place. You go up, you get rice, and then you just get to add the toppings. So look, a wide variety of different things you can add up there. Just about anything you want. A lot of Chinese flavors, a lot of Malay flavors. So let's do it. I've got curry chicken, sweet and sour pork, and some braised beef. So let's try this. We've got the curry chicken. It's really good. It's really nice actually. It's in between a Chinese style curry and an Indian style curry. Nice amount of spice, really good flavor. It's really quite delicious. Now the sweet and sour pork. Very good. It's what you'd expect. It. Any Chinese restaurant. It's got that sweet flavor with the sour flavor, the deep fried pork. Really good. And then the braised beef. It's 
braised beef is very tender. It's been braised very well. It kind of falls apart in your mouth with nice herby flavors. It's kind of your Chinese style herb braised. Not spicy at all, but just really good kind of Chinese herby, beefy taste. It's quite nice. Very good. Toast was five, three for the milk, and this 17.50 brings me to 25.50, just under 20 RM to go for the rest of the day. Let's see how it goes. Stick around to find out. This place is restaurant, 68 mixed rice. It's right here on Jalan Lenda in Kudu. If you want to check it out, that's where to find it. So that was lunch. Now just heading back to where I'm staying. Just work in the studio. Got some editing to do, but a good lunch, definitely. Just finished up at the studio. It's been a pretty good day. Just need to do some final touches on the next edit to upload. But all in all, it's been pretty good. Now it's time to go find some dinner. Let's see what we can get. Just stopping at this clay pot chicken rice place just up the road from where we're staying. They do a really nice clay pot chicken rice with some Chinese sausage in it as well. Just ordered a clay pot chicken rice with some veggies and a bottle of water. the clay pot chicken rice with the Chinese sausage in it as well. So let's give this a try. So chicken, Chinese sausage, lots of really good flavours. There's something about the clay pot that it's cooked in. It's kind of a mix between roasted and steamed but you get those aromatic flavors from the clay pot itself. It's really nice. So just finished up with dinner. It come to 22, so 11 each. That was a meal for two, plus one RM60 for a bowl of water. Leaves us a bit over $5 left over in RM. So let's see what we can get for dessert. place just around the corner still here in Pudu they do do a like different types of nuts in a kind of paste so similar to a custard but it's made of nuts this is sesame and peanut uh, done with the gorilla face looks very cool you can get some snacks some baked goods that you can have with it dip in it so here it is sesame and peanut Really nice, not too sweet. You can definitely taste the nutty flavors. It's quite good. Very tasty, very smooth. So just five RM for this as well. It's really nice. Right, here it is. Really nice, really smooth, good flavors. We're a bit early today, so we like to rise early, eat dinner early. So, it's not busy right now, but this place is normally busy pretty late at night. Really good. So that's 
the Can Brothers Ruby Dessert House. It's pretty good, definitely worth checking out. We managed to come in just under 43 Malaysian ringgit, so still $1.90 in Malaysian ringgit available. It just goes to show on US $10 a day, you can eat very affordably. And you saw what we had to eat, we had breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, dessert, all for less than $10 for the day. So feeling full, feeling content, and the food was delicious. Pudu in Kuala Lumpur, get here, check out the food areas because there's a lot of re great restaurants and food places to go to. Let me give you the room tour, you can check that out. So I'll break down the full cost monthly for you, so stick around for that. So we've got this convenience store here, which is like triple the size of the 7-Eleven. And you've got the 7-Eleven as well, so it's pretty convenient just to be able to grab everything you need just downstairs. Here we are. This is the place I've been staying at for the last month in Kuala Lumpur, here in Malaysia. Uh, it's pretty awesome, really big space. As you can see, this living area is not common. You don't normally see something of this size in Southeast Asia, so that is something I really like, actually. Uh, couch, coffee table, got lights, wall art, more lights, and a really big size dining table actually great for getting work done editing then you've got your full-size kitchen for a place in Southeast Asia not too many appliances you've got your stove top microwave and kettle so everything that you need uh, we've got washer and dryer combo washer dryer which is good and the full-size fridge which I like as well another really cool feature of this place is that we have two air conditioners here as well so really good for cooling the place down really quick you only need one on though the other cool thing about the lounge room as well is we've got this TV with a smart TV box it connects to Android software which gives you access to Netflix and YouTube apps like that that you can watch which is pretty cool This is the bedroom, really big window, nice bed, really comfortable. Over here we've got the TV, little cabinet, currently got the drones and things up there. Another workstation which is pretty cool which I can connect to the TV as well so I can watch Netflix, YouTube from in the bedroom. Big mirror that connects to the bathroom. So full size shower, really nice, and toilet in there, so standard toilet, everything you need, really cool. Minimalist living here is what we're about. We don't have a lot, obviously, because we travel full time. I'll have to give you guys a run through of what I've got in my suitcase and stuff. How many shirts, how many pairs of pants, shoes, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we, we don't travel with a lot, so basically whatever we can fit in our suitcase. And I've got drones and things like that as well, so room is a bit limited.
just finished my workout at the gym here. Did 30 minutes on the stepper and six lots of arm reps with the weights. So they got the treadmills here. The, they got the bike machines as well. Another treadmill and then you've got the stepper. They got this all in one gym system, but it's currently out of order. And you've got the yoga mat and weight sets here that you can use. So pretty basic gym, but a lot of the stuff that you'd need. Shame that this thing isn't working, but it is what it is. And just outside of this gym here, we've got the pool. So it's rooftop gym and pool. So here's the pool. So it's pretty good. You can even see KL Towers just here as well. So yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty much everything you need. Quite often after I hit the gym, I do at least 10 laps in the pool as well. So getting the cardio and fitness up, it's good. Especially being in the cities, I don't get to go on many adventures or hikes, but at least I can hang out here and get some exercise done while I work in the studio and get some editing and different things done and check out the city and share some of that with you guys as well. So yeah, it's all good. Uh, Mongolian lamb skewer. Here we go. Mm. Coming from Australia, I really like lamb. It's common meat that is quite popular. It's got cumin, some spice to it. It's actually quite nice. The meat's a bit chewy though. Maybe it could have been cooked a bit longer. But it's okay. 4 RM for one skewer of lamb. It's alright. Certainly worth it. So this durian store has just opened and all these bouquets that you see along here are gifts from people who are wishing them all the best with their new business. How awesome is that? Durian here is really popular. <laughs> Ordered some Malaysian street food style barbecue lamb, 200 grams for 32 Malaysian ringgit. You can have it with the spicy marinade or without spicy. We went with the spicy marinade, so looking forward to this. Here it is, the lamb, let's try it. Oh. That's really good. Malaysian street food, barbecue lamb, very good. 
It's a mix of like different herbs on it. A little bit of chili, quite a bit of spice. It's good. Very tasty, cooked well. It's nice, very nice. So we're gonna try some barbecue squid. Here to try the barbecue squid. It's not bad. Strong barbecue flavor, not much spice or seasoning, but it's got a strong barbecue flavor to it. This is an Air Batu Campur, it's also known as ABC, with some ice cream. Only 10 RM for this. The squid was 25 RM. Alright, let's try this. It's nice. Quite sweet, lots of ice in there, which is pretty good because it's a warm night. We've got these things commonly found in Thai desserts as well. They're really nice, I think. They're made out of pendant and sticky rice. It's nice. Definitely good, worthwhile. So this is fish cake barbecued in banana leaf. So let's try it. It's quite interesting. It's got a lot of herbs and spices, but a bit more of a, a bit of a curry flavor to it. Quite a big spicy kick too. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. I haven't had anything like it before. It's nice though. Trying pink guava for the first time. Pink guava. I've had guava like this in drinks before, but I haven't actually had the fruit itself. Mm. Tastes similar to an apple. I'm surprised. Very much similar to an apple. All right, so we dropped in at that popular durian place Gonna give durian a try. First time having durian. I've traveled around enough by now. It's something you have to do. They give you gloves to eat it. All right, so durian. This bit is 40 RM. This is trying durian for the first time. Let's get this open. Using the glove to pick it up. Alright, here we go. Very strong in flavour. Very strong smell. It's kind of like... It's a mix between... Um, 
apple, custard, and coffee. It's a really unique taste. It's really soft. Like it's, it's not very fleshy like most fruit. This is just kind of falling apart in my mouth. Very interesting. It is quite nice. I must say. I'll definitely have it again. It's quite interesting, for sure. The easiest way to get to Chinatown in Kuala Lumpur is to catch a train to Pasar Seni. Just here at Pasar Seni, it's the Chinatown here in Kuala Lumpur. It's also where the famous Tiling Street Market is, which we're going to check out very soon and also the Medeca 118 building, which is the second tallest building in the world, beaten only by the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. I'm feeling pretty hungry, so there's this burger place I want to check out just up here. So let's do it. Just here at Ramili Burger in Pasasani, gonna try the beef special cheeseburger. I've heard great things about these burgers. First time trying it. It's a lot of sauce in it. Full of flavor. The beef is quite juicy. It's cooked well. Only five RM. So the burger was good, but still feeling hungry. So let's find something else to eat. So we've got crispy pork, barbecue pork and roast chicken. Pork's cooked really well, it's nice and warm, still juicy in the middle, really nice. Half the fun at these markets is being able to haggle for the price. It is expected here, so you've got to ask for the best price, try and get a discount on what they initially ask you. Often you'll get the best price when you go to walk away. All right, let's have a look at this shoe place over here. I do need to get some shoes. Let's see what they say. Let's see what they got here. These all look alright. They do need some new gym shoes.
So how much? 440. 140? Yeah. Can you do better than 140? Yes. You like, I give you 120 for you. 120? Yeah. It's like $40 Australian. Can you do 100? <laughs> Okay, I'll give you 110. I'll give you 110. I managed to talk him down to 100 ringgit. So it's about 33 Australian, about 21, 22 US. Okay. You buy box? Box, box. Yeah. Man, thank you. Thank you, huh? Mont Blanc by the band. It's alright, but maybe not quite. It's a Versace brand. How much? One week. One twenty. So he started at hundred twenty, ended up getting it down to fifty RM. So it works out to be about seventeen dollars Australian, which is about twelve dollars American. So so far I've got the wristband and the shoes. I think I need to get a belt, so let's go looking for belts. Let's have a look. There's some belts up here. So this place has some belts. There's Mont Blanc, Jeep, Rolls Royce, mm. or just some general type belts. I think I need a leather belt though. This Camel Active. Mm. That one's Coach. This original genuine leather Apex. You see, you can check this original genuine. You can use this minimum 10 to 15 years minimum. I can make for you. You see, this made by Apex and. I make for you football, your ball and football plates. You see this quality is so nice. You cannot go, you cannot color grade, you cannot go anything. Check. Quality very good. It's like this formal. Like this. Yeah. If you like to wear stylish, hard mesh, I have boots you also have, LB hair. I feel usually like this. I'm showing on LB belt. You like LB? Louis Vuitton, the uh, harness, harness also have. This logo is not very high grade, medium, medium grade here. But this Gucci also high grade here. Yes. In this Polaris, this PNG is so nice. Log bell is no hard. I'm, can I show? You like to buy this on this log bell? Can I show? This was very high grade. It's no low grade quality, as you see. This log belt, you see? This, you just check this log. This, so, check, this log, this one, check. Very strong. Yes. Like this. Huh? This can, this can for your good price, no problem. For you? Huh? Huh? You like this one? I have also different. 
Maybe this and that. These two for you people. Who is everybody? This one also very famous, huh? This like stylish. This one, this one for you later. Genuine. If you don't like this style, like it formal, this for you better. Better also. And I have more. Uh, you see? This one is very good. You see this one? Check. Take your hand. Check this one. Genuine leather. No broken. No color going. This is long lasting. Original. Which one you prefer, friend? You buy one or two? One. Select which one you buy. This one come very high extensive. This one also medium price, this one also medium price. Which one actually like to buy? Select first, which one you buy? I can see and take your hand and you see the quality. Which one actually like to buy? This is lovely, this is golden. Let me see the collection. This is the silver, different color, like this black or different. Very famous and I think on my other share this thing is to very expensive. Thank you. Give me that this one. Which one actually you have to buy? It's good to you. This is very high. How much for this one? Okay. We like to pay a uh, dollar or euro or ringgit. Ringgit. Ringgit better. Malaysian. No? I'm not asking like this another customer. Another people like this take this on. I'm not crazy. I'm one from this price. It's not very good. Okay, I just want to know how much it is for that. I just want to know. If possible, like it, no possible, like it, how much it can last. I want to tell you the price. Thank you. It's not in general yet, okay? I hope you tell me first time, maybe, I'm thinking maybe you tell me first time 90. So I'm just request this price, like this my twenty. But if you tell me how can I request this price, okay, friend, check. Okay, how much you make? Tell me. Last, last, last. I just want to know how much. Yes, last, how much? Look like same. You see, you like my blood like this red color, but group not same like this. Maybe I don't know which one you see. I just want to know how much you can pay for me. If possible, like it? No possible, no good. How much is that? Plus. Okay, not you, not me. Be happy, yeah? Thank you. Okay? Okay, last. Okay, how much? Okay. Take this one. If you do I have to change five, right? Thank you, you friend. Very much is Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are two ways to get to Genting Highland from Kuala Lumpur, either by bus and Skyway Condola lift or by taxi. We took the bus and Genting Skyway.
If you go by the Skyway lift, the ticket includes a stop at Chin Sui to visit the temple. Here we are at Chin Sui Caves Temple in Genteng Highlands. Let's check it out. One thing I really like about travelling through Southeast Asia is how easy it is to visit a lot of the temples and palaces. Caves Temple, now I'm off to Sky Avenue by the cable car. Let's go! Highlands, just stopped for a coffee, and yes, this is a cheap day, so I'm having a coffee. Just stopped at Godiva, which is a Belgian style coffee house here in Sky Avenue Mall. That's Great Tropolis indoor theme park just there, and the Avenue of Stars just outside. So, in for a few adventures today. So, stick around and join us. Let's go. Genting Sky World. It's only good if you're going to spend the full day here. The tickets start at 189 RM, 
to 388 RM for your VIP passes. So it really only makes sense if you're gonna spend the full day and make the most of it, go on as many rides as you like, that kind of thing. We were kind of here just to explore a bit more, so we're not gonna do it today, but definitely worth checking out if you're ever in Genting Highlands. Here in Genteng Highlands, gonna try the Liang sandwich bar for the first time. This is a roti based sandwich, should be really good. Gonna try two different sandwiches. So they're wrapped in a roti, one is satay and the other one's Korean barbecue chicken. So let's try them. So I'll try the satay one first. It's a sandwich that's basically made in a roti. Quite tasty. I'm a fan of roti by themselves, so the flavors in this are really good. So this one's Korean barbecue chicken. Mm. All the ingredients have fallen down the bottom, but. Flavors are really good. Mm. Flavors are tasty. The chicken's really nice. Definitely worth trying. These roti sandwiches are good. Very tasty, a bit spicy, but full of flavor. And the roti bread, it's crunchy, with a little bit of softness in the middle. It's really good. The chicken is fresh. Definitely a good lunch meal. Only 15 RM. It's about $3.50 American, about $5 Australian. Just next to Skytropolis, if you time it right, you can watch the Sky Symphony, which is best viewed from the third floor.
Atlas Indoor Theme Park in Gente Highlands. Going to be doing a couple of rides. One is the Super Glider, the other one is the Skyscraper. Stick around, this is going to be hectic. I'm just here at the Super Glider, where I'm going to be having a go at that. That was pretty awesome, I must admit, it's a pretty cool ride. Quite thrilling, definitely gets the heart racing. Goes really fast actually. So that was a super glider, I must admit, it is like you're flying through the air really fast, turning corners at really fast pace. It is very thrilling, definitely worth it. If you come to Skyatropolis here in Genting Highlands, listen to those grooves. Check it out. With Skytropolis, you've got two options for your tickets. You can buy a day pass for 75 RM, or you can buy single entry tickets. So the thrill rides, so the first one that I went on, the Super Glider, that is 15 RM. Adventure and family rides are 10 RM. Thrill rides, which include Spin Crazy, the Super Glider that I did, they're 15 RM. Just heading back down now. As you can see, we're in amongst the clouds. All right, so I'm currently in Malaysia. So you might be asking, what am I doing in Malaysia? I actually really enjoyed my time in Malaysia here last year. So last year we were here in July and obviously the food here is just delicious. It is an amazing country. I like Kuala Lumpur. It's a vibrant and modern city. And today I'm going to share with you this apartment tour. So the apartment that I'm staying at has got a lot of really good things going for it, but there is a big negative as well that I didn't realize when I booked the place, but it is what it is, so let's go check out the room. The name of the place that we're staying is S. It's right next to Bangsar Station in Brazil.
So here we are. As you come in the door, as you can see, we've got the kitchen right here. We have a full size fridge, microwave, got stove top, jug, coffee machine, cups, plates, got water filter as well, so that's really good. And then we've got dining table, which is four seater. So in the living area, we've got TV. The TV has a smart TV box as well. So you can play Netflix, YouTube, that kind of stuff. It's pretty good. Nice full-size couch, extra booth, and then another chair over here. And in the general living area as well, we also have some office space up here. So pretty nice. We've got the desk and chair. And this couch area as well works out pretty well. It's pretty good. Here we have the balcony, so we've got the ironing board and a place to hang some clothes. And here we've got a washing machine as well. So this is the bedroom, big double sized bed, mirror unit, cupboard space, bedside table, pretty decent, massive view as well, really tall windows as you can see, high roofs in this building, and in here we have the bathroom. Pretty straightforward bathroom. You've got the common water heaters in Southeast Asia. And you've got your toilet, basin, mirror, everything that you need. So it does come with shampoo and shower gel. Electricity is included and also internet. The Wi-Fi speed here is pretty good. And you've got air conditioning in the room and in the living area as well, so all good. Lots of cupboard space as well. The building has a lot of other great features down on level 9, there's a pool, gym, games room and library. Let's go check them out. Alright, so here we have the games room. This is pretty cool. Comes with a foosball table. 
and table tennis. So something for the adults and kids to play around, have a bit of fun. It's pretty good. And then here we've got the gym as well. So the gym is actually really good. It's got all the bikes. So you've got the treadmills here and the steppers here as well. And then you've got your weights over here. And then down here you've got your exercise machines. You've got shoulder press, chest press, abs. And then on this side you've got all the different legs. So leg extension, leg curls, and you've got your leg press here as well. It's all pretty good. You've got the lockers. Pretty much everything that you want in a gym is here, which is really good on location, just on the ninth floor. And it's right next to the pool as well. It's after gym. You can go for a quick swim as well. All right, so here we are. This is the pool area. It's a pretty big sized pool, so plenty of opportunity to get laps in. Not a bad view of the city from up here as well. In here we have the library. Alright, so this is the library area. Pretty quiet in here. We've got couch area, table, chairs. It's not used very much. I often get down here and it's empty, so pretty cool. I'm surprised it doesn't get used more than what it does, but it's just how it is. It's actually not a bad place to get some work done. So as you can see, we're really close to the train station. We've even got a walk bridge that goes across there. We're one station from KL Central, two stations from Hataling Street, or Pasarseni, which is where Chinatown is. And we're 11 minutes from KLCC, so right in amongst the city, right next to Petronas Towers. So you've got the pool, the gym, the games room, and the library. So pretty much everything you want and need is available here. It's really good in that respect. We've got a washing machine, so we don't have to worry about washing our clothes. We've got the water filter, so we don't have to buy bottled water. And like everything's included. So we've got shampoo, shower gel, toilet paper, plus your internet and electricity. So can't really ask for more. Alright, so at the beginning of the video, I did say that there was a big downside to staying here. And that is that this is actually a share place. I didn't realize when I booked it on Agoda, we did pay just under 650 US for the month here, but we are sharing with other travelers. So while it is a downside, the positive is, is that we do get to meet other travelers and spend some time with them as well. But I wasn't expecting it because I did book on Agoda and that just sounds weird right like i understand you need to be looking for that when you are on airbnb but not when you're booking on agoda so that is one thing that i did get caught by it was 
discounted, so I did think I was getting a good deal. I still think it's value for money given the facilities, the pool is amazing, the gym is really good as well, plus you got the library and the games room, so overall it's really good facilities. I do have the master bedroom with the private ensuite, so that makes it easier. At first I was really disappointed, but after a couple of days and spending some time in the gym and the pool, I did feel a lot better about it. And the train station is literally just across the footbridge. And then you're one station away from KL Central, two to Chinatown and 11 minutes from the city. And we're right next to Bricksfield, which is little India as well. So overall, it's a pretty good location. Also, if you're wondering how much it would cost to rent a full two bedroom unit here, it's around 1100 US dollars per month. All right, so over the last year, I've spent two months in Kuala Lumpur. Just recently spent a month there. The city itself is quite spectacular. If you've ever been there, you know it's a vibrant and modern city. The people are very friendly and it's just a mix of culture from the Chinese to the Indian to local Malay. This city has so much to offer. So let's get into it. So the culture is definitely one of the highlights of Kuala Lumpur. You've got a big influence of Chinese there. So you've got Chinatown, Pataling Street. And you've also got Tain Hu Temple as well. The Buddhist temple there it looks absolutely amazing. Here we are at Tain Hu Temple. Let's check it out. And of course, plenty of Chinese restaurants all over the city. My favorite places for Chinese food in Kuala Lumpur are Chinatown and Pudu. Some of the best Chinese food you'll ever have. In Chinatown, you've also got the Pataling Street Night Market, which is full of different stores. You can buy all types of goods from clothes to bags, shoes, jewelry watches, you name it, it's all there. Half the fun at these markets is being able to haggle for the price. It is expected here, so you've got to ask for the best price, try and get a discount on what they initially ask you. Even walk away and you'll get an even better price at times. The Indian culture is well represented in Bricksfield where you've got Little India. The place lights up at night and looks absolutely amazing. very colorful and very vibrant and the food there is some of the best Indian food you'll try. I recommend checking out Banana Leaf while you're there. There's a couple of really nice restaurants that are really good. There's the Oh Yeah Banana Leaf. And the Seni Satisoro Indian Restaurant. They both offer banana leaf with really nice, authentic 
Indian dishes. There's also the Hindu temples in the city. One in particular, you've got Batu Caves, which is just amazing. If you ever go to Kuala Lumpur, it's definitely worthwhile heading there to check it out. Then of course you've got the Malay culture as well. There's plenty of mosques to go visit as well as Medeka Square. And there's even places you can go to check out the authentic Ketchik dances there as well. And of course, you've got the Malaysian food there, which is made famous by satay, laksa, and nasi lemak. As for the city itself, Kuala Lumpur is modern, vibrant, and clean. Patronus Towers is absolutely amazing. And then you've got Medeka 118, the second tallest building in the world, beaten only by the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. You've got KLCC, the park during the day is a good place to chill and hang out. And at night you've got the Fountain Symphony which lights up and is a must visit location. We've also got Saloma Link which has the amazing backdrop of Patronus Towers. Saloma Link, one of the crown jewels of Kuala Lumpur, looks pretty amazing. got dining options like Envy which is absolutely amazing. Here we are at Envy Sky Dining. This place has an amazing view of Patronus Towers right here. Having lunch here is actually amazing value. You get this view plus the lunch special meals start at 1680 RM and it comes with a drink as well. So really good value, really can't beat it, especially with this amazing view. Sky Bar, if you're going for sunset drinks, Sky Bar is one of the best places to go and they also have happy hour from 5 to 7 as well for sunset. And of course you've got 
book at Bintang as well in the city. That's where Pavilion is. Famous places for foreigners. There's the nightclub strip, plus you've got Gallon Alor Street Food Night Market. Both are amazing places to go, have a few drinks, eat some delicious food. And of course, the famous kebab place, Damascus, which always has a waiting queue for people to dine or even get takeout. Absolutely delicious food in Bukit Bintang as well. One of the highlights for sure in Kuala Lumpur is the shopping. There's everything from fake markets to plenty of world-class shopping centers. It's a really good place to go if you like shopping or you're a foodie. It's a city that's got both of those covered in space. As far as its location, it's central to Southeast Asia. You've got Singapore and Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos all really close to Malaysia. Okay, so back with another Real Talk video from Kuala Lumpur. So the Real Talk video is all about telling you what Kuala Lumpur is like right now. No hype, no BS, just how it really is and what you can expect should you come to Kuala Lumpur. So in this video, we'll be covering food, accommodation, transportation, what it's like for digital nomads, the activities, culture, nightlife, one month living costs, and should you come here, is it worth it? As well as some things you may not like about Kuala Lumpur. To get started, let's talk about how to get to Kuala Lumpur. So it's pretty straightforward. They do have an international airport here, so you can fly direct into Kuala Lumpur. Some countries do require a visa, so make sure you check out the official government website for information on that. Transportation, so you've got the option of using Grab or Uber here. Grab is an app, it's just the same as Uber. Also, Kuala Lumpur has a pretty comprehensive public transport system, so there are plenty of rapid KL buses as well as the MRT and monorail train lines. You can get around quite easy and quite cheap using the public transport system. So when it comes to accommodation, so being a major city, you do have everything from your luxury apartments to hotels, resorts, and even hostels. So next up, food. So Malaysia has some amazing food from satay to laksa, nasi kendor, nasi lemak, You've also got banana leaf, your Chinese food and Indian food. There's so many choices. Plus you've got all the international options, Japanese food, Korean food, and then you've got your Western barbecue, hamburgers, pizzas, all of that is available here in Kuala Lumpur. So for the digital nomads, Kuala Lumpur is probably one of the most established cities in all of Southeast Asia. So it does come with really great Wi-Fi speeds. I get 40 megabytes a second upload and download. You can get much better than that. Wi-Fi here is not an issue at all. Data, depending on the provider you're with, is usually quite good in Kuala Lumpur. But as you're traveling, you might find some providers are good for certain areas than others. And for the activities, being an established city, there are lots of activities that you can do. One of the most popular activities in Kuala Lumpur is shopping. You've got the Chinatown markets, you've got street food night markets, and there's plenty of options for a day trip or a weekend trip. You can go to places like Genting Highlands, Malacca, 
even Ipo as well. They're all just about a two hour trip away and you can be there, enjoy the day and come back or spend the night if you want. So the nightlife in Kuala Lumpur is quite good. You've got karaoke bars, bars, nightclubs. I recommend checking out Sky Bar or Chang Cat Strip in Bukit Bintang. There's a lot of foreign friendly bars around there which you can grab a few drinks and meet other tourists. There's plenty of pubs and hotels in Kuala Lumpur KL City Centre as well. If you're looking to come to Kuala Lumpur for the culture, Kuala Lumpur has a wide variety of cultures. You've got Little India in Bricksfield, you've got Chinatown in Pasarseni. There's plenty of Indian food, Malay food and Chinese food. You also have Hindu temples, Buddhist temples and mosques as well. If you do enjoy culture, Kuala Lumpur really shines with its culture. There is a lot to do and see. have living costs. I'll give you the breakdown in costs based on a couple because that's what we spent and I'll also give you what we estimate the monthly cost would be for a solo traveler. I will give you the breakdown in US dollars, Australian dollars and Great British Pound as well. For transport in Kuala Lumpur we only use the train system and grab. We spent 437 Malaysian ringgit for the month. For groceries we spent 297 ringgit for pharmaceutical items, we spent 110 ringgit. For food and drinks, so this is eating out and ordering grab, we spent 2,770 Malaysian ringgit. For mobile phones, sims and data, we spent 96 Malaysian ringgit. So activities and tickets getting into places, we spent 545 Malaysian ringgit. And for accommodation, we spent 2,878 Malaysian ringgit. So the total for the month comes to 7,133 Malaysian ringgit. So that's as a couple. And we estimate for a solo traveler, you'd need 5,111 Malaysian ringgit. So that's factoring in accommodation at the same place, having things like the food, mobile phone, pharmaceutical items, groceries as they're being shared. But for transport, when we're in a grab, that remains the same. However, if we're on public transport, then we're only getting one ticket rather than two tickets. So that's essentially how we work out what the cost would be for a solo traveler. So should you come to Kuala Lumpur, is it worth it? If you're a foodie, you enjoy culture or shopping, then Kuala Lumpur is amazing for all three of those. It has a wider range of culture. The food is delicious and so many different types of food to choose from. Plus, You've got a vibrant city, lots of activities on top of that. If that sounds good to you, then Kuala Lumpur should definitely be on top of your travel list. It's always in the top 10 of most cities visited worldwide. It definitely has a lot to offer. It has a vibrant city and nightlife scene. The alcohol compared to other parts of Asia is a bit high due to taxes though. But in saying that, there's a lot of karaoke bars, pubs, hotels, and nightclubs. If you do go to Kuala Lumpur to make the most out of your trip, I do recommend going to Ten Q Temple, Batu Caves, and of course, checking out the Fountain Symphony at night at KLCC. That is a must-do activity. And I also recommend doing weekend trips or day trips to either Gentang Highlands, Malacca, or even Ipo. All three are available for a short day trip or just a side trip for one or two nights. They are all definitely worthwhile for visiting. If you're staying for longer, then there's plenty of islands to check out as well. The Pahenshian Islands, Langkawi, Penang, all are amazing and definitely places I want to visit in the future. And for the digital nomads, there's a digital nomad visa, there's co-working spaces and digital nomad community in Kuala Lumpur as well. There's meetups that you can attend. So definitely worthwhile looking into that if you're going to Kuala Lumpur as a digital nomad. Alright, 
so we all know that Kuala Lumpur is an amazing, vibrant city, full with different cultures. But what about the things that travelers don't like about Kuala Lumpur? The first is alcohol prices here are very expensive compared to other countries in Southeast Asia. This is due to heavy taxes on alcohol prices here. Another thing that people may not like about traveling to Kuala Lumpur is that open public affection is frowned upon and if you're making out in public you can even get arrested. So you can hold hands but it's crossing the line if you're hugging and kissing someone in public. Another thing that travelers do not like when coming here being that Kuala Lumpur is only 160 miles from the equator it does mean that the sun is very strong here. You do have to wear sunscreen and be mindful that if you're out in the middle of the day and it is sunny it is extremely hot. So I've still got a video to come from Kuala Lumpur plus I'm heading to Thailand so I'll be spending some time in Bangkok and traveling around the south of Thailand so looking forward to sharing that with you. If that sounds good to you, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you have subscribed already, you're awesome. You're the reason why I make these videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.